In today's video, I review the carnivore doctor Ken Berry, who suggests the root cause of IBS, IBD, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are caused by fruit. Just when you think the internet can't get any more stupid. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Just a quick reminder as always that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool test and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. And this video is going to tell you about a hidden cause of irritable bowel symptoms that you may have never heard of before and now that you know about it, you might actually be able to completely reverse your irritable bowel symptoms that you otherwise would not be in control of. Oh, I really look forward to this. I wonder if he's gonna talk about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the migrating motor complex, stomach acidity problems, or even bile acid malabsorption. I wonder what could be this great secret the doctor is going to share with us and provide such enlightenment. Everybody's familiar, if you have irritable bowel, with the symptoms, abdominal pelvic pain, fatigue, bloating, gas, diarrhea, nausea, heartburn even. A lot of people have sugar cravings, puffy eyes, uh, poor hair, skin, and nails, poor mood. Some people even bordering on depression, and then fever and chills when you're having an acute flare-up. Yes, I think most people are aware of those types of symptoms when they are suffering from a plethora of gastrointestinal problems. So where are you going with this, Doc? All of these things are caused by something in your diet. So that's quite a wide sweeping statement there, Doc. So let's just correct him. So for some people, those symptoms are related to diet, but for many others, however, they are not. And hopefully you've already learned enough about your body to get all the unnecessary processed foods out of your diet, the sugar, the grains, the vegetable oils, the alcohol, but the problem is, is a lot of people, when they stop eating the standard American crappy diet, they change to eating lots of fruits. I'm sorry, did he just say that the problem with America is because people are removing processed refined foods and alcohol from their diets, and then they are consuming too many fruits? Funny that because the CDC suggests that only one in every 10 adults get enough fruits or vegetables. So where are you getting your facts from, Doc? Maybe the school of Sean Baker? Lots of fruits and vegetables, and they may be switched to whole grain breads. But the problem is, is that there's a very common cause of irritable bowel symptoms that changing to this more healthy diet, it doesn't really help at all. In fact, it can actually make it worse. So I would agree with him that there are conditions such as SIBO that will cause a person's symptoms to get worse when they load up on fruits and vegetables. But here's a little secret for the doc. You identify through testing what is causing your issues and then you work on resolving these problems. But let's see where the doc is going with all of this. There's a thing that can cause irritable bowel symptoms and very often be misdiagnosed as irritable bowel disease or even ulcerative colitis or Crohn's and that is fructose malabsorption. So fructose malabsorption symptoms include nausea, bloating, gas, abdominal pain, fatigue, and also diarrhea. These symptoms do not correlate with immunological dysregulation or increases in calprotectin or even CRP marker increases. And this on screen is what colitis and Crohn's do to the gut. So nobody is going to misdiagnose fructose malabsorption with autoimmune diseases such as colitis. Up to a third of all adults have fructose malabsorption syndrome. Funny that doc, because I've been through the laughable studies that you just listed there, and not one of them even remotely suggests that one third of all adults have fructose malabsorption. If the doc did even basic research, he would see that looking at organizations like the National Organization for Rare Disorders, that hereditary fructose intolerance affects between one in every 10,000 to one in every 100,000 births. So even if you said it's somewhere in the middle of those figures, that's just one in every 50,000 births. So looking at the maths there, that would mean in a global population of 7.594 billion, only approximately 151,000 people would suffer with hereditary fructose malabsorption issues. So not really one in three people, is it, Doc? All he is trying to do is muddy the water and use ridiculous small-scale studies 
where cause and effect is not shown and say, look, half of 15 people who took fructose intolerance breath test tested positive for fructose intolerance. This is ridiculous because there are so many issues that can drive malabsorption issues in the gut, such as stomach acidity issues, transit time problems, infections in the gut, such as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But yet again, with absolutely zero evidence, we have another carnivore health expert saying, no, 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 it's definitely fruit that is causing all of these issues. Absolutely genius. And so when you eat foods that are rich in, in fructose, which is the sugar found in fruit, in soft drinks, and even in vegetables, if you eat too much fructose, you're not able to absorb it properly. Notice there, he said, if you eat too much fructose. Again, another genius statement there, because if you eat too much of any foods, then they will have the ability to cause digestive issues. In your small intestine, and so a very large amount of it makes it to your large intestine. And when your bacteria, who normally reside in your, in your large intestine, when they get hold of this fruit sugar, this fructose, they go crazy, making lots of gas, making lots of inflammatory uh, molecules in your large intestine. And this is going to cause irritation and ir inflammation in your large intestine. Yes, but here is a notion for you, Doc. You figure out why you are malabsorbing fructose. And as long as it isn't hereditary fructose issues that involve genetic mutations, then you fix these issues at a root cause. And then the malabsorption issues are improved or go away. Magic, isn't it? And in fact, many doctors who are not very familiar with the differences between IBS, IBD, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's can misdiagnose you with one of these conditions and you wind up on a handful of pills when all you really need to do is decrease the fructose in your diet. Did you hear that? Everyone with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, IBD, IBS, and other digestive issues, you just need to remove fruits from your diet and the problems will magically go away. What a guy. So I wanna tell you about a diet that is absolutely fructose free and many people have used this diet to completely reverse their irritable bowel syndrome, disease, their ulcerative colitis, or even their Crohn's disease. And that is a carnivore diet. You know, an important step in becoming a doctor, medical students must take the Hippocratic Oath. And one of the promises within that oath is first, do no harm. I would say, Doc, with some of your comments today, your oath has well and truly been broken. Now, I've got quite a few videos about the carnivore diet on this channel. You do, just like before, when you had a lot of videos on the ketogenic diet, and that was the latest fad diet to sweep the internet. I wonder what will be next. If you're one of the people out there whose doctor, whose dietitian told them to eat lots of fruits and lots of vegetables and lots of whole grains, but then you wound up doing the exact opposite of that in order to reverse your symptoms, then you might wanna check out my book called Lies My Doctor Told Me. There is always a book somewhere in there to make a bit of bumps, isn't there? And it actually goes into a lot of detail about the stupid things that doctors tell their patients that just aren't true. Oh, the irony in that statement. Anyhow, another carnivore diet expert making bogus claims with zero credible evidence to share. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.